Hi guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous postcard perfect day here in the end times in Doomsday Trailer West in Peonia, Colorado. I just finished my Doomsday Headlines rant for the day, but this story deserves its own rant and what this is is a mainstream media book review on this brand new Bible of the Apocalypse, which I'll need to get my hands on to do a full sermon on, called Living on a Dollar a Day, The Lives and Faces of the World's Poor. And this is the cover photo where you see, uh, I'm guessing this is in India or Bangladesh, this little boy clutching his kid brother or sister, two more uh, people who should never have been born on this planet. But uh, I'll come back to this to read their review. Let's just dive right into this uh, book. And what they do is just offer a few of the photographs you can find of the book. And so this is how I started off my beautiful day in the Rocky Mountains. How about this picture, guys? Uh, how about that face? There you go. Now, uh, this face belongs to... Let's see, let's read what we're looking at here. I, I want you to take anyone, anyone who does not support a planet-wide mass sterilization program. I, I want you to look into that face. A and you sit here and tell me that, that I am a goddamn uh, evil eugenicist because... I think this child should never have been born. And let's see here. Okay, take it away, mainstream media. From India. In the Charan slum settlement of northern India, Kalpana, age 20, <coughs> starves starves one of her own children, Sanjita, age two, that's who the picture of uh, was of, while her sister, Sarita, five months old, sleeps in comfort in her mother's arms. There you go. Sanjita, this is the two-year-old girl, only weighs nine pounds. And this is but not by accident. This is by design from her 20-year-old mother. Children are more likely to appeal to the sympathy of those inclined to give to beggars, such as the whole country of India and the continent of Africa. So those who beg use children for this purpose. Sometimes, as in this case, a child is purposefully starved and carried about by the child's parent while she begs on the street. Or the child is rented out, rented out to another beggar to be used as an object of sympathy in the hope of generating more income over the course of a given day. Sometimes these extra funds are used to feed other children. Thus, in practice, one child is sacrificed for the sake of others. According to the World Bank, 19,000 children die a day from preventable causes. The, uh, the cause of this child's uh, agony, this nine-pound, two-year-old little girl's agony, was pregnancy. 
her mother's pregnancy, her 20-year-old mother, who should never have been born with at least two kids. This, mother, this child needs to be euthanized, and her mother needs to be strung up and hung in public. Okay, let's go from India over to Sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, okay, what is the story for this little uh, eight-year-old girl in Sub-Saharan Africa? Who's, uh, who hopefully will be stricken down by Ebola before she breeds in a few years. Okay. In an e-waste dump, an e-waste dump, this is talking about when this computer, when I'm done with this computer, it will probably be sent over to Africa in what is dumped, uh, what is termed an e-waste dump. In an e-waste dump, that kills nearly everything that it touches. Fati, aged eight, works with other children searching through hazardous waste in hopes of finding whatever she can to exchange for pennies in order to survive. While balancing a bucket on her head with the little metal she has found, tears stream down her face as the result of the pain that comes with the malaria she contracted some years ago. This is work she must do to survive. This is an eight-year-old child in sub-Saharan Africa. It doesn't even tell what country. My guess is this is a garbage dump in Ghana. So again, I want you to look into the face of this child and say, what is the solution uh, to this child's problem? And uh, what is the only solution for uh, to this problem as uh, as sub-Saharan as as Africa's population is set to rise from one billion to four billion? Okay, let's go over to where are we going now? Is this back to India? Let, no, this is Cambodia. Okay, what is going on in Cambodia uh, right about now? This little snapshot, they're mainly talking about this guy on the floor. What is, what is this man's story? This man is Fei Fana, age 60, lost his leg when he stepped on a landmine in 1988 near the Cambodian Thai border. He is now a widower, and so Mr. Fana is the sole head of his family caring for his 11 children. Caring for his 11 children in a home he does not own. And now his home has been scheduled for demolition since being purchased by a private real estate developer in Phnom Penh, Cambodia. So I guess this one-legged man and his 11 children that should never have been born can just move somewhere else. If this fucker had gotten a vasectomy like I did before he had his first child, 
perhaps he would not be in the mess that he's in. And so anyway, what is going on with this book, Living on a Dollar a Day? Living on a Dollar a Day wins IPA's Best Documentary Book for 2014. Okay, one in six people in the world live at or below the poverty threshold of one dollar per day at a time of great social and economic disruption in the world. People on the brink of survival can be easily pushed over the edge or just as easily pulled back to safety. There you go. And the people who generously shared their stories inspire us to change lives for the better. So, Living on a Dollar a Day with photo text by Thomas Nazario, photographs by Renee Beyer, and with a foreword by the Dalai Lama, is a passionate call to action. A passionate call to action presenting 348 pages filled with over 200 color photographs, profiles, explanatory charts, blah, 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 that deliver an unprecedented and thought-provoking examination of global poverty. And most striking, the book offers innovative ways to transform lives through individu individual action, large or small. There you go. And at the end of each chapter, it lists nonprofit organizations that focus on problems such as child labor and lack of access to health care. And we are shown how change is possible. There you go. Isn't that sweet? And uh, there was a comment, but it's already been buried by some dude named Hambone Littletail making his comment on this book, pre just predicting without reading it, that you will never see the word overpopulation anywhere in the book. And you better believe that nowhere in these 348 pages of innovative solutions will you see a planet-wide sterilization program to keep children like little Sajita from ever being born so she could be starved to death by her own mother, and we can save the rest of the species we share this planet with until we get that program in action, all of your goddamn little food drives. Don't you get it, guys? This, this is a worldwide effort from these people who should never have been born to get more of our money into these international aid organizations that will keep little girls like Sajita and Fatima alive so they can keep breeding so we can send more foreign aid to keep them alive so they can bring more and more uh, people like this onto the planet. Mm. Do your own math, guys. Uh, I don't need to do it for you. But anyway, all of this talk about food aid is making me hungry, and uh, I gotta go fix me some lunch. Bye, guys.